the time of Jacob's trouble. Giving all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah Bashem Kakodash. And I thought about going to a lot of different precepts. I'm pretty much going to stay in one chapter because that's all you really need. Let's see what the Spirit, let's see how the Spirit moves me. Anyway, this is from Jeremiah 30, verse 7. It says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Jacob in the Hebrew is Yaikwab, which means supplanter. That was the name of our father, Yaikwab. The, the 12 tribes of Israel came out of Yaikwab. So Yaikwab is interchangeable with the term Israel which means Yah meaning he, Shah meaning prince, and Allah meaning power or God. He is prince of God. The Mosai is a king and we his sons are princes. We are the only true sons of the Most High. This also includes the angels because the angels are also referred to as princes, which are sons of the Most High. That's also in Job chapter 1, the first couple of verses, and also in Job chapter 2. So let me read that seventh verse again. Alas, for that day, if I didn't read it, alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. So Israel is going to be saved out of that time that a, a, a day is that for that day is great so that none is like it. None is like this day because this day hasn't come and our deliverance will come in the midst of Jacob's trouble. Esau is getting ready to do some shit, man. For he know if that he had but a short time. So now you can read the whole chapter. It's only 24 verses long. I may jump around, but let's see where the spirit takes me. And as you read it, you understand that this is referring to a prophecy, a prophecy that's getting ready to take place. When Jeremiah received these prophecies, when you read uh, Jeremiah 49, Jeremiah 50, Jer Jeremiah 51, and Jeremiah 30, like if you go into Jeremiah 50 and Jeremiah 51, when Jeremiah saw these visions and wrote them down, in his mind, this was in the midst of the ancient Babylonian Empire. This was during that time period, you know, before the Medio Persians, before the the Greeks, before the Romans. So Jeremiah, when he received these prophecies, he was thinking about the Lord delivering us from uh, the Babylonian captivity. Same goes with Daniel and the other prophets during that time period. But we know that it was referring to Babylon being destroyed. It's not talking about ancient Babylon, but talking about the new Babylon or the daughter of Babylon. And how do we know that? <laughs> well, it's in the 30th chapter of Jeremiah. It's also in Jeremiah 50 and Jeremiah 51 and Jeremiah 49. 
when you read those chapters back to back, it's either in 50, Jeremiah 50 or 51, it says, um, Yahweh and Israel were oppressed together. And it says pretty much the same thing in this chapter, the 30th chapter, it's be, in, in the third verse, it says, for lo, let me, matter of fact, let me, let me start from the top. So don't let anybody, let anybody tell you that Jacob's trouble already took place or we're not going to be delivering Jacob's trouble. There was a video put up concerning uh, this guy from the IUIC, the head of the IUIC, which is Nate. He's, he's known as the Bishop Nathaniel, which he said in an interview some years back that there's not going to be uh, Jacob's trouble. Now, he had recently made a video saying that he was talking, talking about that five years ago, that five years ago, wasn't going to be a time of Jacob trouble. Now, when you watch the original interview with the writer from from the islands, if you got his name, you can put it up. I'm not going to look it up. The guy is yelling at Nate about, you know, there is going to be a time of Jacob. And he said, nope, there's not going to be a time of Jacob. And you can see in the video that uh, 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 Gazak had put up, but he put it up based on what... Uh, or Elder Gazak put up based on what uh, Elder uh, Manatezak Bob put put up out of uh, South uh, Carolina. I didn't see that video, but I saw the one that Gazak had put up, and he actually shows how he made the stay. Oh, I was talking about five years ago. No, when you watch the actual interview, he said, um, you know, when it when it. When the time comes for us to deliver, be delivered, we're just going to be delivered in so many words. you got to watch the video itself. So he's clearly um, reversing himself if you watch the video. Anyway, let me just read um, the first verse, Jeremiah 30, verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from Yahweh, saying, Thus speaketh Yahweh the Most High of Yash Allah, saying, Write these, write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. Now, mind you, these prophets, these great prophets that saw these visions and wrote them down, they didn't understand what was going on. We here, being the, the latter day prophets, we understand exactly what's going on. Those words or those prophecies that these great prophets saw are for us today because it's going to come to pass in our time. It says in the third verse, For lo, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel, Yasha Allah, and Yahawadah. So what is that talking about? It's talking about now. It's not talking about... We're talking about 2,600 years ago, approximately, during the time of the Babylonian captivity. About 150 years before that, the Assyrians, led by um, King Shalmaneser the fifth took down the so-called the kingdom of Israel, the north, so-called northern kingdom. So we know that this is not talking about now. Now, Jeremiah was probably thinking that, well, somehow the Most High is going to bring the, so, the northern kingdom back and we're going to be delivered. Well, it wasn't delivered during Jeremiah's time. This, the third verse, is yet to happen which is Jacob's trouble. It said, For lo, the days come, say of Yahweh, that I will bring the captivity of my people, Yasha Allah, the northern kingdom, and Yahweh, the southern kingdom, say of Yahweh, and I will cause them to re return to the land that I gave to their fathers 
and they shall possess it. Well, that's getting ready to happen. That, that never took place. And these are the words that Yahweh spake concerning Yasha'Allah and concerning Yahweh. For thus saith Yahweh, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. See, this coming uh, turmoil, tumult, whatever you want to call it, you can't compare it to any time in history. It says um, in Isaiah, the 13th chapter, that this thing will destroy the whole land. And that land is talking about Babylon the Great, the daughter of Babylon. It says in the sixth verse, Ask ye now, and see whether a man doeth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness. You know, when you're sick, you look pale. So all these people, these nations, including Israel, including Esau, there's, there's going to be a time of trouble that you can't compare to any time in history. Now, before this happens, they will attempt to uh, microchip everybody on the planet Jeremiah 30 verse 7 alas for that day what day well we're reading about it from the first verse from the first verse actually the third verse for lo the days come saith Yahweh that I will bring again the captivity of my people Yahshua Allah and Judah so it, it says days right here, right? But the ultimate destruction, see, the time of Jacob's trouble is not going to be a one-day event. It's going to be ongoing. But the actual day of Yahweh will be when the destruction comes, when the Lord comes. pursuant to uh, Revelation, the 12th chapter, pursuant to Daniel, the 12th chapter. It says, 7 verse again, Jeremiah 7, 30 verse 7, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's, Yaquab's trouble. But he, Yaquab, or the Israelites, shall be saved out of it. 8 verse, for it shall come to pass in that day, what day? The day of the time of Jacob's trouble, Savior Howell of hosts, and hosts meaning his armies. One of his armies are the missiles. Another army are his angels. Another army are is the Israelite men of 20 years and above, that I will break his yoke, whose yoke? Yasha Allah's yoke, from off thy neck and will burst thy bonds and bonds literally mean they got paperwork on you through the social security card through um, adhesion contracts which is ap application when you get a driver's license you, you sign an application it's not an application it's, a, it's an actual contract because you sign off on it they don't accept the paperwork unless you sign off on it because you're making a contract with the local DMV. So that's an adhesion contract. It says, and strangers shall no more serve themselves on him. The strangers are the other nations. They're not going to be able to get over on us. We're going to be able to get over on them. See, right now you're slaves by way of paper. The old term, you sign your life away. Well, that's literally, literally what, what we did. Now, ultimately, what, what these elites want to do is uh, put a, a chip in you, whether it be 
by the uh, jab that has nano technology in it or whether it will be the chip or whether it will be both. This is what this whole thing is about to actually chip everybody. And you have to agree to do it. They can't just grab you up and put it in you. You have to agree to do it. Which means you made a contract with this man, which means that when the Most High comes, you're telling the Most High, you don't want to be delivered by the Most High, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You love your master, which is Esau. So the Most High is going to leave you. So a lot, a lot of these jakes are not going to make it because they're going to have what? They're going to have chips in them. GMS is the only group out there that's pushing this. No other group is pushing it. Now, mind you, they, they know it, but they're not pushing it. It says in the ninth verse, but they sh shall serve Yahweh, their power, and David, their king, whom I will raise up unto them. So we know that Jeremiah 30, the 30th chapter, has not come to pass because David would have came back again. Tenth verse, therefore fear thou not, O my servant Yaquab, which represent Israel, say of Yahweh, neither be dismayed, O Yasha'Allah, for lo, I will save thee from afar. Because where are we? We're in America, we're, we're in North Central um, and South America, in different parts from around the world. And thy seed, thy children, from the land of their captivity. The main captivity is right here in America. And Yaquab shall return and shall be in rest, which is the kingdom that goes hand in hand with Isaiah 14, verses 1 and 2. And be quiet, and none shall make him afraid, the Israelites afraid, because we're going to be in the kingdom. And we're going to be blessed with spiritual power. It says... For I am with thee, saith Yahweh, to save thee, though I make a full end of all nations, whether I have scattered thee. Because the reason why we're over here in the Americas is because the Most High put us over here. We were scattered. Yet will I not make a full end of thee, but I will correct thee in measure. And that's what's happening now and will not leave thee altogether unpunished because the Most High is pulling the, the curses off of us. Now, if you go back to hardcore slavery, you know, if you had a choice to go in a time machine and be in hardcore slavery working in the field or being in this captivity, you would take this captivity because this captivity that we're currently in is not as bad as the captivity going back 100 years plus years ago so the most high is sl bring, slowly bringing the curses off of us you know Jake is doing good you got Jake's that do that's doing better than Edomites 12 verse for thus saith Yahweh thy, thy bruise is incurable and thy wound is grievous the 13th verse there is none to plead thy cause that thou mayest be bound up. And what 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 is the thing that's gonna bound bound us up and make us better? What is the ointment that's gonna make us better? This truth. So we are like doctors, physicians. Thou has no healing medicines. All I love is have forgotten thee. They seek thee not, for I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy. Because the Most High looked at us as an enemy, like another, as a, like another nation, like a heathen nation, with the chastisement of a cruel one. And who did he use to chastise us? The other nations. The last nation that are 
that have chastised us or are chastising us to this very day are each to of thine iniquities because thy sins were increased. Why criest thou for thine if, affli afflictions? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquities because thy sins were increased. I have done these things unto thee. Therefore, 16 verse, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. So those are all the nations. This is getting ready to happen. And all thine enemies, adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity. This Is Esau in captivity? Did Esau ever go into captivity after the time of King David? No. But the, in the coming f future, they will go into captivity. So you can't get around these scriptures. We know that Jeremiah, the 30th chapter, has nothing to do with any time in history but now and the future, the near future. It said that, it said that every one of them, every one of them nations that came up against you shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all thy and all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. This this is something that's getting ready to happen. If I will restore, 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 excuse me, health unto thee. And I will heal thee of thy wounds. When is this going to happen? When the mo when when your how shy comes back with the angels, say of Yahweh, because thy because they call thee an outcast, saying, "This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after." And the fact that we call ourselves Israelites, um, we're demonized for that. Eighteen verse. Thus saith Yahweh, Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents, and have mercy on his dwelling places, and the city shall be built upon her own heap, and the palace shall remain after the manner manner thereof. It speaks about the. Uh, Restoration of the of the house of David, and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. We're going to be happy, and I will. Revelation twenty one says that we're not, we're not going to cry anymore. In so many words, I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. Talking about the Israelites. Their children also shall be as aforetime, and their congregation shall be established before me, and I will punish all that oppress them. 21st verse, Jeremiah 30, verse 21, and their nobles shall be of themselves, and their governor shall proceed from the midst of them, and I will cause them to draw near, and he shall approach unto me. For who is this that engages his heart to approach unto me, saith Yahweh? And ye shall be my people. Who shall be the Most High's people? The Israelites. All you got to do is go back to the third verse. For lo, the days come, say if Yahweh, that I will bring again the captivity of my people, Yasha Allah and Judah and Yahweh. Twenty-second verse, Jeremiah thirty, verse twenty-two, and ye shall be my people, 
and I will be your power. Who is he talking to? The Israelites. Not some mixed multitude of other nations that believe. Behold, the whirlwind of Yahweh goeth forth with fury. And that whirlwind represents the ships, the chariots, the UFOs, so you can understand. A continuing whirlwind, it shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. Who is the wicked? Malachi 1, Esau, the Edomites. The first 24 verse and last verse, the first anger of Yahweh shall not return until he have done it and until he have performed the intents of his heart. In the latter days ye shall consider it. What does the latter days represent? It represents the end, the end days. So what's going to happen in the latter days? Jacob's trouble, verse 7. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say Shalom.